Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you've been following this channel for a while, you know I love my quick and dirty game tools, especially quick and dirty free game tools, and that's exactly what we are looking at today. We're looking at a newly released application called Dust3D. This guy is completely open source, QT-based application released under the MIT license, which makes it so that you can do just about whatever you want with this guy. It's completely free to use, um, and it is available on Windows and Mac OS in binary form, but should be compilable for Linux people out there. And Dust3D is basically a 3D modeler unlike any 3D modeler you've ever seen, but it's also just for creating simple meshes quickly. So basically you would use Dust to create base meshes, which we would then bring into another model or environment if you were gonna sculpt them or add detail to them, etc. But the approach it takes is very novel, very straightforward, very new. So let's take a look at it. First off, let's look at how to get Dust. Dust is available on GitHub. I will toss this link down below. As mentioned, it is QT based, open source, completely free, MIT licensed. Um, so you can grab the source code here too and build it from scratch if you wish. And again, if you're a Linux person, that's exactly what you're going to have to do. Uh, but if you are on Mac OS or Windows, just click here, go to the download links and pick which one you want. Uh, you'll also notice that the help is also available over here uh, as are some modeling examples. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and grab that zip file, extract it out, and it looks something like this. Then go ahead and just run Dust3D, the executable, and here is Dust. Now, Dust is a very straightforward in its approach. Uh, what I'm going to do is basically create a new model. So we'll just come in here somewhere and just click, 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 and then right click to finish. And you'll notice up here in the corner, we just created uh, a tube or a, a bar. I'm not really sure exactly what you call it, but what we've noticed here, this is our X axis that we're modeling on, and this is our Z axis. Now, since we've just basically created a straight line, they look almost identical, but once I start tweaking this out, you'll understand exactly where the difference comes in. So let's grab one of these guys. So you can grab any point or any circle on this point at any time, and you can then drag it around. And you'll notice our shape is moving with it. Here, let me just, oops, that's not what I want to do. Let's undo that. Here, let's just go like that. If I come on up here with nothing selected, the scroll wheel will modif will um, give our preview mesh, make it bigger, it's like so. And you can also use the shift key and the middle mouse button to move it around and position it on screen. Uh, you can also, use it holding down the middle mouse, orbit around and look at the generated mesh. We can also come up here and turn the wireframe on. So there is the mesh that's being generated from our work. Pretty cool. So what you've got here basically is one axis and the other axis. So as we move this, it moves it along that axis. As we resize it, it reshapes it on the axis. And kind of that's it, to be honest. So the rest is a matter of just creating your shape. Now, there are a few resolution-based resolution issues. There are a few stability-based issues because this is a 0 .0 release. So expect some issues. Uh, I find the, um, for some reason, even I'm not on uh, DPI scaling, the UI is almost impossible to read. Basically, this is where each part, I can create multiple parts in our model. Each part will be shown here. There are some settings for it, so you can do things like symmetric modeling. Uh, you can toggle smoothness, which I believe is this guy. Oh, no, this guy. So you can go between a sharp edge or a, a smooth surface. Uh, this guy is for our thickness and our depth, like so. So if you wanted to create a very skinny model, you can zoom both these in and you'll see the result is a more compact shape. And then this last guy over there is symmetry. So if I do something on one side, it does it on the other. Although I do find that particular feature to be kind of buggy. So I'm not going to present it in this particular example. But kind of this is the extent of it, to be honest. And now all you kind of do is just keep making your shape by extruding out surfaces. Um, and again, you could do the same thing. If you're a fluent box modeler, you can do a lot of this using polygonal tools as well. So uh, it's not a huge time savings for an expert modeler, but for a beginner, there's definitely a lot of opportunity here. So let's say I go here, select the shape, go back to plus mode, and let's give this guy a butt, a tail. So the tail, let's scroll, oops, select that, scroll that down a little bit, scroll that down a little bit, move it back like so. And let's make that guy a little bit bigger. Now, another thing I really wish, and if you're the developer, uh, please pay attention to this. I wish there was a way that if I selected this, it selected the corresponding version of the other axis. So when I'm selecting this guy, see, it's a bit of a, a gamble to try and figure out which one is on this side. Also, trying to pick one in the depth hierarchy is a pain in the butt. So if I want to get to this shape here, it's just a matter of waiting for it to highlight, or sometimes I have to move everything else out of the way to get it. But I think this, is this, I think. 
Uh, but again, it's a bit of a guessing match and I kind of wish that you could select it from one axis to the other. But here you see, I'm just gonna go ahead and create some legs. So there you see coming off the side of our shape, we now have a leg. Obviously it looks a little weird. Like so. And you just kind of keep going like that. So if I wanted to then on this shape, which I'm gonna guess is that one, uh, to create. So this is where symmetry would, would be great if I had it working a little bit better, but uh, it hasn't worked great for me. Oops, I just did something wrong. All right, so let's select that shape plus and let's bring another leg. So, and there you see our other leg. And any time we can switch between the two axes, whichever one works best for our modeling, so our shape, we can move it here. And you're seeing the end result updating over there. Now, you're not going to be creating game-ready assets by any definition of the word, but you can do quick and dirty modeling results. It's, it's pretty awesome that way, to be honest. Um, again, we can select everything and we can move that over a little bit. Uh, you do have the ability to zoom out to a certain degree uh, so you can have more detail. You can zoom in to a certain degree. We're actually as zoomed in as you can get. Um, you can, so when you're zoomed in completely, you've got the option to pan around, which only works in one axis. So hopefully that is something that is fixed in the uh, later iterations. I also wish that actually clicking these did it, didn't just toggle your mode so you came over. But you know what, I'm quibbling at this point. There's other things I could do. So I could go ahead and I could create a completely new shape separate to it, like so. And you'll notice now I have a separate shape and then you can join them together, you can attach them, etc. cetera. But um, it's just kind of more of the same workflow in the end when you go that route. So really, that was it. Uh, it's I created a swimming dinosaur-y thing, um, or at least half of one, in just a few moments. And if you want, when you're done with it, you can go ahead and export it out. Uh, the export format is OBJ format, uh, which is the old-fashioned wavefront format. Uh, Wavefront objects are basically supported by every single 3D application that has ever been made, ever. Um, so you'll be able to import your mesh into uh, whatever platform you want. Earlier I brought one of these into um, Blender, for example, and the mesh is exactly as seen. Uh, the toggle for here is important, so if you want less detail, uh, you, you're gonna wanna click that guy off and on. The only thing you'll find uh, is, oops, yeah, there's some of the crashiness here, so let's go back to the title screen. Uh, what you'll find is some of the meshes are triangulated, so you might want to bring them back to quads. I prefer a generated quads. It creates some triangles where it doesn't need to, uh, but still all the same. You can create some really, really cool base mesh shapes in but a few seconds. Now, once again, you did just see a crash. There are some usability issues on the interface, but it's a .0 release. It's completely free to try. Um, and I can really see this being valuable to non-modelers. So if you can think in two dimensions, so if you think of like above and to the side, uh, it's probably the fastest way to go about creating a base mesh or a simple mesh that I've ever seen. Um, and you know, I've been using Blender long enough that I could probably reproduce this workflow in Blender with almost the same amount of time, but it took me years to get to this point. If you're just starting out and you're looking for a tool to just quickly create meshes or shapes or just to play around with, you might wanna check out Dust3D. So once again, I will throw that link down below. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, quick and dirty tool, quick and dirty video. I uh, hope you found it useful though, I hope uh, the Dust 3D developers here and they, they get encouragement. You've got a cool product on your hands here. Some usability tweaks here and there, but uh, the base of mesh generation idea is very good. So uh, keep at it, great work. All right, let me know what you thought of that in the comments down below and I will see you all later. Goodbye.